Hello, I'm Charlie Mox. So far on Grog Snobs, we've tasted some different whiskies from around the world. In our pilot episode, we touched on Scotch whiskey. We had some Isla whiskey, we had some Ardbeg, and we had uh, some bourbons as well. But tonight, before we move forward into other countries and, and other types of whiskies, I think we should take a step back and let's cover the regions of Scotland. Joining me to sample and discuss Scotch whiskey is Lance, a man who's rocking back and forth in his chair because we haven't had a drink yet. Uh, thanks, Martin. I, I am um, excited. Scotch whiskies is a, a favourite of mine, or one of my favourites. I'm very interested in uh, what we have here today. And also joining us is Craig, a man who's already drinking raspberry lemonade. <laughs> got us, got us to <laughs> somewhere. We've got one whiskey from each major Scotch whiskey region tonight. Uh, except for Isla, because we touched on Isla in the pilot episode we did. With the Ardberg? The, Ard, the Ardberg, yep. yep. But before we get stuck into them, Craig, we've got a bone to pick with you. Uh, yeah, it is. We've worked on three episodes so far, two of which are online. One, one of which will never be released. Yes, we refer to it as the Lost and Forgotten Rum episode. Mm, lost at Sea, of course. In all of those three episodes, all the uh, whiskies or rums that we've tried you like to refer to all of them in some way or another as metho. Yes. So Lance and I got you a present. <laughs> here, <laughs> here is your very own bottle of methylated spirits. Excellent. Oh, I guess what I always wanted. Who got the orange juice? <laughs> <laughs> now see that big P word on the side of the bottle? That means don't drink. Poison. <laughs> Have a whiff. That's what metho smells like. Interesting. Smells like whiskey. Is it true? <laughs> <laughs> You're an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> you walk into it. Yeah. So first, gentlemen, let's go to Speyside. Speyside is, of course, uh, the most busiest Scotch whiskey region, where uh, the majority of whiskey distilleries are in Speyside. But for uh, this episode, we have a bottle of Glen Moray, which is a 12-year single malt. And around these parts... In Australia, this is probably the best bottle of whiskey you can get for under fifty dollars. Oh, really? Oh, okay, excellent. That's very interesting. I've never actually tried it. Oh. Yeah. What flavours can you smell? Metho. Oh my god! He's not going to give it up now. Yeah. Now, now, <laughs> now that we've picked on him for it, he's not going to give up on that. I, I think Go we should just down. take the lid off that bottle and sit it next to you. <laughs> yeah. compare. That smells sweet. Well, I, I tell you what I can smell. Well, if you need a hint, one of them is Craig's favourite word. Metho. <laughs> His second favourite word. Oh, I forgot. What's my second word? Cinnamon. 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 Oh, oh, yes. Cinnamon. I've learned how to say it since our pilot. Well, I'm getting... I've got vanilla. Yeah, I've got vanilla. And uh, sour fruit, sort of like a lemon. So we've gone for the, the sour side. Sour is sweet. Yeah, space side is usually quite fruity. Mm-hmm. But but this one, it's got your sour sort of fruit with the lemon, all similar. And then it's also got the vanilla sort of going in with it as well. Yeah. I haven't hmm. had too many so whiskeys with cinnamon in them. Scotch so. whiskey, if you're going to find cinnamon, it's usually... F- from a different region it's not mm, not okay. something you'd usually find in a space site but like I said space site is the busiest region there is yep. so I'm sure they've got a lot of different things going on mm. shall Very we have a taste I think we shall we shall cheers 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 gentlemen <laughs> there he goes <laughs> he held it together he held it yeah. together there for a few seconds it and took a sec for it to go <laughs> boom uh, it's very sweet at the start and then cinnamon comes through slightly and then dries up a little bit. Yeah, it's sort of like, you can really taste the malt there. The malt is sort of complementing the sweetness that comes through first. Oh, that's the... Mm. I'm trying to get it right. Malt. Malt. Is that what you can taste? Yes. Or smell? Oh, I hint of, yes, probably more smell. Okay, mm. nice. I think it's a bit, yeah, a bit more smell with malt. I can definitely smell vanilla. And once you said cinnamon, yeah, I knew straight away that was cinnamon. It's very, very slightly smoky. Very slightly. Mentioned the sort of lemon 
with the cinnamon mm-hmm. that comes through at the end yeah, yeah sort of tickles the throat after you downed it mm. but mm. what initially comes through when you have it is, is that sweetness with the, the malty flavour mm. for a 12 year single malt under $50 that's, 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 a, lot of that's, that's a lot going on that's really good value for mm. such a under the radar whiskey well, they definitely a warmth at the end of it yeah there is a little bit of, mm. a little bit of warmth coming through when you feel that burn come through from the alcohol that sort of ensures it's not going to be scored high but there's nothing really going on to yeah, um, to make you sort of turned off no I'm not really getting much of a burn at all well I'm thinking scoring I'm thinking a 7 out of 10 mm. which is what I scored the Jamison yep I'd, I'd say 7 so is, is this on par with Jamison what do you reckon it's definitely on par with Jamison there's, there's less burn with, with this than Jamison though Jamison has a bit more of a burn okay I remember when we had the Jamison, you you mentioned the caramelized sort of finish at the end. Are you getting that with this one? No, I'm not. No? No. Not as caramelized as the Jamison. You get that caramel sort of vanilla flavor at the start. Yeah, yeah. Whereas Jamison you get at the end. end, This one you get the cinnamon, the burn come through at the end. That's right. Yeah. But I I, I very much enjoy it, so Mm. I'll be giving it a 7 out of 10. Craig, you getting any more flavors come through? No. No No. hairs growing back yet? I think they're slightly starting to stand up. (laughs) <laughs> Cleans out the sinuses, people. Um, so you got a seven, and what was your score? I'll, I'll score that a seven as well. Did you have some red yet? Oh, yes. You had some red? I, my distinct taste is raspberry lemonade. <laughs> right, gentlemen. So tonight I brought in three whiskies, one from each region we haven't covered yet. We covered Isla in the pilot with an art bag, so tonight uh, we've got three. One from each of the other Scotch whiskey regions we haven't covered yet. Well, actually, Mum, I've um, brought in one myself. Oh, of course you have. <laughs> Surprise. So we've got four whiskies. Mm, we do. We have one from Speyside, which is the Glenmore Toby single malt. We'll get to the others. But uh, Lance, what did you bring in? I have actually brought in a Paliska, a Dark Storm edition. This one has been slowly climbing its way up the ranks, so I've been told. I'm enjoying it, so I hope you do too. Lovely. So the, the, um, the Dark Storm. Dark Storm, yeah. Dark Storm. It is a, a Highland. It, it, it actually gets me confused. It is a Highland single malt that is actually labelled by the sea. Right, so next we're going to the Lowlands. And Lance, this is one of your favourites, I believe. It is. Uh, Orkentoshin. Now, I had Orkentoshin uh, a couple of years back, just um, out of the blue on a trip to New Zealand. Um it was on a shelf with a couple of really expensive New Zealand whiskies, and I actually preferred it. I've had a three wood, and I've had a half wood. Um, I prefer the three wood. Um, Orkdoshin stands alone. Born in 1823, we are Scotland's only remaining distillery who insist on triple distilling every drop. Orkdoshin three wood ages gracefully in American bourbon casks, finishing in Spanish Oloroso and Pedro Zimmen. I can't pronounce this. Zimenex. Zimenex, sherry gas. <clears throat> the results smooth and complex with rich fruits, chocolate and toasted hazelnuts. So, does that tick some boxes for you, for you Sid? Olé! From what I can remember from my Orkin experiences, mm-hmm. uh, I do remember it is quite sweet. Yeah. And I'm not a fan of the, the sweet stuff. I will give it a go. Yeah. What, what I like the most about it is the sherry flavours that come through at the end. Is this particular whiskey aged in sherry casks? It is, yes. Some people like sherry, some don't. I've never really had a, a strong uh, Scotch whiskey sherry flavoured before until this one. Okay. And I hope you enjoy it, because I know I do. Shall I do the honours? Very, uh, it's very dark, isn't it? It is. Oh. It is uh, very dark. Oh, you can smell the sherry in that, can't you? Yes, I can smell it from here. Not a big fan of sherry, but I appreciate the uh, the aging process because Orkentoshin usually get their barrels from Jim Beam, yep. so most of their whiskies are aged in bourbon barrels. That's right. But they do sometimes have the sherry cask. The sherry cask gives it that red tinge, mm. that very dark. Real dark amber color. A uh, woody um, color. What, what do you think, Craig? Sweet. Yes, yeah, very sweet. Very sweet. Smell. All, all we're getting out of the sniff is sherry and sugar. Yep. Mm. Smell wise, that's all I'm getting. Yeah, very sweet. Sweet in that Oh. <laughs> Have a taste, Craig. See what you think. Even threw the head back with that one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. 
Burn. I can feel it going down. I'm getting c- cinnamon or something similar. Mm-hmm. There's, there's a lot of heat coming through there. Not so much a burn, but th- there's that spicy heat mm, coming through is. at the end there. Mm. Are you getting that? There is. Yeah, there is a lot of spice there. That's the sherry, I would think. Yeah. Because that's usually that's traditionally spice. what comes with a sherry. Mm, a lot of fruit and a lot of spice. Mm. Yeah, a spice is something I can't pick the flavour. I know it, but I can't pick it. Mm. Well, that's all I'm really tasting. I'm not I'm not picking anything else out of that other than the sherry. Mm. I'm just, I'm not getting any fruit. Apparently, this is supposed to have a marshmallow flavour. Okay. Oh, that's fine. You can, you can taste marshmallow cake. Mm. Well, I can't. A marshmallow taste. Well, I suppose sh- if I'm tasting the sugar, then I suppose I'm tasting the marshmallow. Mm. I've been told... Um, not that I've had marshmallows for quite a while. Mm. Huh? I haven't had marshmallows for a while, too. I might have to go get a bag. When was your last camping trip? I can't remember. Surely you've gone camping in the last 12 months. No. Well, last Easter, did you go camping? I think we did last Easter. Did you date marshmallows? <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> did you have marshmallows while you were camping? Yeah, I did. But I had a marshmallow <laughs> in my coffee about three weeks ago. And there we go. <laughs> <laughs> so we went from not having marshmallows for a long time yeah. to having one a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> I just remembered. <laughs> when I cook marshmallows, I prefer uh, prefer to be flaming hot and then all crispy and black. Oh, so you're one of those dangerous people who, who've got a marshmallow on fire trying to throw it at somebody on the end of a stick. Yeah. Oh. All you got to do is duck. That's how you lose an eye. <laughs> yes. No, because right. some people are too stupid to duck. Yeah. Instead of ducking, they try to open their gob to catch the marshmallow, and instead they get it in the eye. No, no, I don't throw it at people. I, I, I blow it out gently and then eat the crisping goodness of mm. yeah, I like marshmallow. Them. I like them like that as well. I've never thrown a marshmallow yet. However, cheesels make excellent fire lighters. Sure do. Fire lighters, yes. Fire yes, they're brilliant. Fire stars. The flames on them get about a foot. You know what else makes a good fire star? Yeah. Whiskey. Whiskey. Mm. And metho. I'm glad that you distinguished the difference between the two. Yeah. Yeah, that's a step yeah. forward, Craig. Thank you. <laughs> well, that one only had a very, very, very small hint of meta. Ah, so you're slowly desensitising myself yeah. to meta. Who, who, so who actually enjoyed that? Well, for me, not so much. I don't really uh, like the sherry flavour. If, if a whiskey is aged in a sherry cask, the, the sherry flavour should complement the flavour of the whiskey. Not the other way around. Yeah, well, in this case, the sherry completely overpowers whatever the whiskey yeah. is. I'm, I mean, I've read that there's supposed to be marshmallow, maybe some fruit, mm. uh, some dried fruit. All I'm really getting is sherry and sugar, mm. uh, and it's not all that smooth either. Uh, it's it's quite uh, dry. I think most of the, the flavour mm. that comes through is from the sherry. Yeah. So well, there's, there's not much mandarins, bananas, mm. and some grapes, or, you know. There's yeah. nothing like that there. I can't really comment as far as all that goes, but compared to the one we had first and compared to this one, I like the first one better so far. You like the first one better? Mm. And it's got a sweeter flavour. I'm more of a sweeter too. The label says chocolate and yeah. toasted hazelnut. And hazelnut. I'm not getting that. No. I don't think I would do anything to it. I don't think it needs ice or water or anything like that. It's just the flavour of the whiskey itself mm. I'm not a fan of. Okay. So I'm sure it has its fans. I'm sure there's a fan yeah, base going out there somewhere. I, I do enjoy it. Um, personally, I wouldn't order it myself. Mm-hmm. Do you like sherry? Well, sherry to me is... It's, it's mainly that sort of gingery cinnamon flavour you get that sort of burns your throat. Mm-hmm. Maybe after a meal or whenever, you you sort of want that. You sort of want that sort of flavour going on in your mouth, so you'd have a sherry. But when I have a whiskey, depending on what sort of mood I'm in, I don't think I would specifically go for a whiskey that tastes like sherry if i would want sherry i would have sherry that's true it's not a bad whiskey itself it's just one that i don't really like mm. so i can't really score it high but i can't really score it low mm. so i'm uh, stuck in the middle somewhere so craig yes would you have that again no <laughs> all right well it's an interesting flavor but no from a personal point of view i'd give that a four out of ten Okay. But I don't think the whiskey is a bad whiskey. It's mm-hmm. just that I don't like it. So that's yeah, why I score it low. 
You don't want the sherry flavor. We, That's right. You're after a whiskey, not a sherry. That's right. Yeah. I like the smell though. Mm. It smells good. Thank you for summing up what I said. That's yeah. good. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Well, and, uh, well, I took about three seconds. You took that, that's right. You, you took three seconds to sum up what I said in ten minutes. From my point of view, I, I, I do like it. Um, it's not a whiskey that burns your throat. It doesn't. Um, it's not overpowering. You don't have to mix it with anything. It is very, very strong in sherry flavours. A lot of fruits and spices in there. I, I'd have it again. I, I, I enjoyed the last bottle I had. I'd probably say around a seven. Ooh, As I, I do like the fruity. Eight sherry flavours yeah well if you like it, it then different. you like it I, I like different things and this is different and hint of flavour flaming marshmallow yeah I, I, I do love my flaming marshmallow <laughs> the name organ Toshin is from the Gaelic it translates to the field of the corner in Gaelic field of the corner uh huh yeah try and pronounce it I, know, the, um, I don't speak Gaelic I don't read Gaelic there you go hmm when I was in Scotland I nearly got biffed by a guy Continue the story, please. So, Martin, oh. this story that you just um, come out of nowhere, you, you're trying to, <laughs> trying to get biffed on no, by the no, people. No. I was in Inverness, went to a pub, and this uh, fella who was already sloshed and almost legless, he was quite happy to put his arm around me and tell me that I was his brother and that we were friends for life. He even bought me a beer, that was nice of him. But that's pretty much all I caught of what he said because everything else he was yelling into me it was pretty much Gaelic okay so I didn't pick up what he said and then they put on a they were playing some music they were playing a certain song which was his favourite song and he said I should go dance and I said uh, no I'm good and then he tried to biff me so we left the pub <laughs> <laughs> all because of a dance he wanted to dance with me he's heartbroken I don't think he wanted to dance with me I, what I think he wanted to do was to watch me dance uh, no, to this folk ballad because it was one of his favourites so it, maybe it was a bit of initiation he wanted me to prove that I was his brother for life so I was to dance to this song accordingly to his standards alas uh, I did not <laughs> thus he wanted to biff me <laughs> thus you left I left <laughs> biffless and danceless and danceless well, well I, I was there with my friend Ali she just every time she looked sort of over at me this guy had his arm around me sort of swinging around and y- shouting Gaelic words into my ear not directly in my ear he was he was just shouting because it was very loud yeah. and all of a sudden I'm grabbing her arm and saying let's go <laughs> she was quite confused as to why I had to explain it on the way out hmm. as you're running down the corner with a drunk Scottish bloke in his kilt no, he was, well he didn't chase me which was uh, mm. which was good he, was he probably busy. just picked on the next guy or <laughs> mm. he was too busy dancing well, that's the thing, he wasn't dancing. Oh, okay. He just... Well, he, he wouldn't dance with him. <laughs> he was disappointed. He was shattered. He would never dance again. Mm. My brother from another mother's gone mm. back to Australia. You know what? He's probably still in the same pub right now. Probably. With his arm around some other fellow asking for the same dance. <laughs> <laughs> probably. 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 It's quite fascinating actually, in Scotland. The, the more you go up, the more they speak um, Gaelic. Mm-hmm. We're in a town called Ibarn. Exactly. Yeah. We actually went to a um, Scottish dancing night where we um, learned some Scottish dancing, and that was pretty cool. The the band was um, speaking so fast you could hardly understand them. <laughs> I get a couple of Scottish customers at work. Good fun to, to talk to. Speaking about work, while I'm here um, cleansing my palate for our next sampler, I've got some idiot news to fill you in on. I was at work the other day, and uh, the boss calls us in for a staff meeting. What he needs to tell us in this staff meeting is that there was an incident in the stairwell. Uh, one of the cleaners, whose job it was to clean the stairwell, had an accident and is now injured. Apparently, this person took a tumble down the stairs oh. whilst trying to clean the handrail in the stairs. And you know, stairs, fairly standard uh, structure. You need a handrail in the middle to sort of help people balance Mm -hmm. uh, going up or down the stairs. And as most things, they gather dust. Mm -hmm. This person's job was to dust that handrail. So this person apparently started at the top, Mm -hmm. was dusting. Good place to start. This person started at the top of the stairwell with a rag on the rail itself and then headed down the stairs. So he's walking with, with his with, hand on the rail. With, with the with hand the upon the rag, mm-hmm. on the rail, 
heading downstairs. Simple as way possible. Sounds good, doesn't it? Yeah, sounds, sounds like a practical way to dust nice a and, stair rail. Well, that's nice the best way I'd do it if I was cleaning the stairs. This okay. person, as they did it, was walking down the stairs backwards. They yeah, probably wouldn't do that. The person okay. was walking down the stairs backwards, miscounted the amount of stairs on the particular run they were on, tripped at the bottom one, took a tumble, injured themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently this is worth a staff meeting to tell us about this and then to add on the end, the reason we're telling you this is so that and this doesn't happen again. We want you all to take care whilst on the stairs. Please walk forward. No. No? No, no, no. That's not where we're going with this. Oh, okay. okay. You would think that you think, this person takes a tumble, you then tell them. Walk how about you, how about next time you go down the stairs, walk forwards. Yeah. Then you can see the steps in front of you. Or even... And then you don't need to keep count of where you're at. You can just see them. Then you won't have a fall. You say, start at the bottom and walk up the stairs. And no, if you it's fall... That's a good idea. Well, if you're walking forwards, at least you get to the second bottom step. It's like, there's another step in front of me. I shall step on that one, and then I hit rock bottom. Hmm. The other reason we're in this staff meeting okay. is to be told that the supervisors of the cleaners are starting to get some meetings together and form some sort of committee to then take it to the next level to maybe get a piece of tape put along the bottom step <laughs> to avoid further backwards walking incidents. <laughs> so this, this, this bit of tape on the step, is it going to say, is do it, not walk backwards? Is it, is it meant to be grooved or is it, kind of... or is it meant to be, um, you're supposed to see it? Well, the idea of, of the tape is so when you see the step with tape on it you know that step is the bottom step you, therefore when you get to the next bit it's level and it's not another step but if you're walking down the steps backwards looking up you're not going to see that bit of tape are you? No. No, so, 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 so you know what they need they need a light a light above your head saying please turn around maybe rear view mirrors yeah maybe yes. they could hook up on their shoulders some sort of rear view mirror so mm. they can look back down behind them to see the step with a bit of tape on it yeah, but great. therefore they're not actually watching the hand on the rail like they were doing the first time mm. no. or maybe they could even just swap the entry and exit signs around so the guy actually thinks he's walking <laughs> down backwards where he's actually walking up front of it or maybe they should just sack the person because if they're that incapable of a freaking walking down a set of stairs well, probably not the person but probably more the people who make the decisions like Let's put a bit of tape. So if you're walking backwards, you'll definitely see it. Yeah. Obviously, you've got eyes at the back of your head, mm. which I've been working on, and it doesn't work. We want more safety down the staircases because we're incapable of walking down them backwards. So, yeah, that's my idiot news. Mm. Oh, Jesus. No, obviously, there are some idiots there. So, um, how long was the staff meeting? The mm. idiot news staff meeting? Mm. Yeah, the, the uh, staircase incident staff meeting. That was a solid 60-minute staff meeting. All right, boys, it's Whiskey Club time. Speaking of the Whiskey Club, um, they have shared our last episode, the Irish Whiskey episode, so shout out to them. Yes, thank you, Whiskey yeah, Club. big thank you. So we have the Glendronach 15-year single malt, which is a Highland Scotch whiskey. So we're working our way around the place. We've done, you know, we covered the Isla in the other episode. We've done Speyside, we've done Lowland, and now we're on to the Highlands. Now, the only thing with this one is, depending on where you uh, do your homework, mm -hmm. some people say this is a Highland, some people say it's a space side. I'm 99% convinced that this is a Highland okay. Scotch whiskey. Yeah. Is it on the border of the regions? I don't know. I, I don't know why some people out there who think it's a space side, but I'm convinced it's a Highland. Okay. And like the last one, the uh, the Orkintosh we had this one is aged in cherry casks so, so I'm hoping it's a bit nicer than the last one because I didn't really enjoy the last one I, I'm actually this should have more flavour like the flavours that are in here should be a lot stronger mm. and hopefully they, they break through the mm. cherry guts for it well before we uh, pop this one open one flavour I am getting through from the three wood is that dried fruit sort of sultana flavour I think this is going to be very similar to the Orkin Me um, too. It's very dark in colour as well. Extremely dark. Wow. Yeah, it's it's a, it, very yeah. dark, red, yeah. ambery colour. It's very. I think it's almost darker than the Orkin so I, I think it is. I think yeah. it is darker. Yeah. So Craig, would you like to do the honours? Absolutely. Lovely. I'll let you do the pouring. Oh, oh but you were so good at it last <laughs> time. Come on. No, you, Come on, right, Craig. yeah, Craig. Come on, pour us a glass. 
Yeah. Oh, did you get a waft of that? I did. I just got a huge waft of that. Yeah, I did. Ooh. What did you, what did you smell? Ooh. I smelt that, that same sherry flavour. Yeah, that's what I thought. Oh, it's stronger. For those listening, I'm quite far away. Mm. I'm quite a fair distance away from Great, and I've got a huge mm. waft of, of the flavour. Well, of I'm that. even further away, and I get smell it. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Here's very, that. very strong in sherry. Flavor. Yeah. Well, well, I'm getting, I'm getting a whiskey flavour out of this one now. I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting a little hint of malt. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's not just that pure sherry flavour like from the last one. Well, fruit. I'm getting fruit. You know, when you open a bag of nuts and it has like salt almonds and all the dry bits of goodies in there mm-hmm. the chewy goodies that's what I'm getting not a hmm, sweet there's Glen Dronach Revival appearance deep gold with a lovely mahogany heart nose incredible concentration of aromas treacle toffee and chocolate orange nutty notes and vanilla palate a very dynamic and full bodied dram chewy with coffee chocolate and treacle Goes. And finish a veritable feast to enliven the senses. Mm, sorry, gentlemen, mm. I, um, I've yeah. already dived into mine. It was, um... <laughs> oh, I, I, I'm enjoying the smell of this a lot better than the last one. I, mm. I'm getting more out. I'm getting fruit, orange chocolate. That's interesting. I'm, I'm getting after. I wouldn't say orange chocolate. When I think orange chocolate, I think Jaffa. Yeah, true. But uh, I don't have a Jaffa flavour in the smell. Yeah. But there is orange and there is chocolate. But they're not sort of combined as what you would get in a Jaffa, is what I mean. After tasting this, I know, I, I know you're going to like it. It is more whiskey based. I'll give it a go. Other than the, the more sherry based. He's looking up your kilt. <coughs> Every time. I like how he, <coughs> he toughs it out. Mm. He says, I'm going to cough, I can't handle this, but he sort of clenches like, no, nah, I'm good. Yeah. But then <laughs> he can't hold it in. But he gives it a go, oh, yeah. which, which is good. I take it. Well, one for the team. Oh, Any flavours coming through? Apart from that taste, very, very, <laughs> very w- yeah, very very warm. Very warm. It's very good. warm. I'm, I'm getting. I'm enjoying this. I don't. I don't know if it's if it's a spice or if it's the alcohol content, but that's a lot warmer than the other two we've had. It is. It is warmer. Could be spice. What is the other? Uh, this is a forty-six. Hmm. Maybe it's um, it hasn't spent as long in the sherry cards, Maybe mm. so well, the alcohol content still doesn't get broken down by the sherry. Okay. Maybe. Sure. I'm not getting coffee. Yeah, they say leather as well. Leather. Because there's nothing we like better than licking leather. It sort of has a, a bit of a. A leathery smell to it. That could be the taste I couldn't identify. Well, that sort of brings a bit of dryness out. Yeah, is that is that leather element? Yeah. Uh, if, if it was a lot smoother, you probably wouldn't get that leather. But yeah. I don't know who goes out and says, "I'm going to buy a bottle of whiskey today." What do you have in leather? Car seat. I've never, the, I've never <laughs> gone into the paddock and stripped a, a cow of his leather car. Yeah. I don't know what ah. leather tastes like. Oh, that's where leather comes from. That's right. It's a lot more enjoyable than the previous one, the three wood. Uh, I like this one. It, it's got a lot going on. It's definitely got a nice whiskey taste to it. Mm. And right. it hits you straight away, like the, the warmth and everything. It, it mm. comes straight out. Straight after you, you get a bit of a, a sherry flavour. The whiskey straight there overpowers the sherry. You get all the dried dried fruits, dried goodies, and then you, you just, you're just left with a, with a, with a flavour. Yeah, I really like that. Straight away, the first hit you get is the sweetness. It's yeah. that sugar, yeah. that sherry flavour. Yeah. But then, very quickly, the malt comes through, mm-hmm. and then you're left with that spicy sort of fruit flavour, mm. and the fruit isn't too sweet, and then that real spicy warmth comes through at the end. Mm. This is a very good one for winter. If anyone's cold at night, I recommend yeah, this one. The, the after, like the, the flavour doesn't hang around for a long period of time. No, no, it doesn't. Like it's, it's got me wanting to have another drink. So. Yeah, the, the star of the mouthful is, is the warmth at the end because once that takes over, it doesn't go away. No. A little fight going on right at the start. You've got your sherry, you've got your fruits, and that, there's, there is that leather element in the smell. Mm-hmm. Once that warmth kicks in, it, that's, that's it. You're not yeah. get, once you get to the warmth, nothing's coming back. So if you, if you prefer the stuff at the start, then you just got to keep throwing it back. Mm. Which could end your night quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Don't drink while cleaning. Backwards, <laughs> downstairs. 
Well, apparently you don't need to drink. You just need to walk backwards down the stairs mm. and just guess the amount of stairs you're walking down and get it wrong. Yes. <laughs> so obviously he was And therefore, we will form a committee on your behalf to get a bit of tape put there so you can do it again. If I was lying there like a cockroach, <laughs> just guess going, oh, I'll be going, that was unfortunate. For those who can't see Craig right now, He's spreading you like a cockroach. I'm spreading like a cockroach. <laughs> I am method acting. <laughs> oh, it's, it's an interpretive dance. It's an inter- interpretive dance. <laughs> spreading like a cockroach. Ooh, kinky. <laughs> oh, that's good. I think we've lost Number Martin. 70, the cockroach. <laughs> no, 71. The spreading oh. of cockroach. Spreading of cockroach. Number 70 is a spread eagle cockroach. Number 71 is a spreading cockroach. Slightly different. Mm. One's an eagle and one not. And 72 is a spread eagle cockroach watching someone fall down the stairs. <laughs> Who miscounted? <laughs> or, or, now, or, or another one's like, whoop. So I, I let go of the hand. Yeah. Oh, no. Even if you do miscount the stairs, you think there's one more, you think there's one less. Surely your human natural balance will kick in and just go, whoa, I made a boo-boo there. I don't know if you've, you've noticed it as well. A lot of these scotch bottles, now, I've looked at a fair few of them, they're almost designed the same. Now, now I don't know what's, what's to go with all these uh, factories in Scotland. Yeah, I'm um, not sure what the style of bottle is called, so maybe, I can't help you there. Maybe all these factories buy a certain style of bottle from the same factory, maybe? Mm. A lot of these bottles, the same shape. Even even um, Ardberg, it um, it's a fatter bottle at the bottom, but it still has the same the same neck bottleneck. I would like to know a bit more about that. Um, it, it's sort of like yeah, you, instead of having a straight neck, it's a it's like a football. Yeah. When I say football, I mean rugby ball. I, I think it's a good idea to mm. um, take a photo of that and say, hey, what's the go with these bottles? Oh, I'd, I'd like to know. Yeah. Well, if if anyone's listening to the show and they'd like to uh, get on to us, send us a message. You can like us on Facebook and then post on our Facebook wall or send us a private message on Facebook. Grog Snobs, not hard to spell. G-R-O-G-S-N-O-B-S. Um, scoring, scoring. Who's this? Craig, okay. would you okay. or would you not have that again if offered? I'd maybe consider it. <laughs> First one so far is still my favourite. Even uh, I, I, the Glen Moray. The Glen Moray. Right. The second one I wouldn't. This one I probably would consider. It is different. The the warmth really takes over, but it's not it's not a bad thing. It, it it's not burning me. It, it's not painful. The way I like to put it, 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 it soaks into your palate. The warmth. It, it, okay. Yeah, that's interesting. That, that's probably the easiest way to put it. Like if, you get a lot of burns where they go down your throat because the high alcohol, high mm. alcohol content, mm. but this burn sort of soaks into your palate and stays in your mouth. It doesn't go down your throat. What do you think about that? So if your palate or your mouth were a sponge, mm-hmm. it soaks up the warmth. Yeah, that's right. I like that. It, it stays there for a good 10 seconds, 20, 15, well, it, 20 seconds. It lingers. That's right. Once you're sort of finished and, and that warmth is there, the leather we talked about, mm-hmm. the chocolate... Dried fruits. The toffee, uh, that's gone. Mm. But what does come through very, very slightly is that little hint of fruity flavour, that sort of apricot mm-hmm. flavour. Just a smidge is still mm. there. It's like getting a handful of your, of your dried fruit with, with nuts from the bar. Not disappointed with that one? No, not at all. Uh, that's I a keeper. I'm, I'm tossing up between a six and a seven. I'm going to go an eight. Going to go an eight? Eight. eight. I uh, actually no six would be too low. Uh, would you say it's even with Jamison's or better than? No, Jamison's? no, it goes up past there, mm. but it's not as good as Ardberg, which I gave it eight. Ooh. We're going to seven and a half. Okay, seven and a half. Fractions again. I oh, yeah. don't start your shit, dude. <laughs> so, so hang on, it's, it's well, not as good as Jamison's, it's not, and you gave Ardberg an eight. So no, 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 it's better than a Jamison. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's not, not as good as, 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 as Jamison's, and it's not as good as. Ardberg. Yeah. Seven. So Ardberg should go to like a nine, and then this should have an eight. Well, I think what what it is I do is <clears throat> I pretty much score it out of a hundred. 
but I'm dividing it by 10. So yeah. instead of saying 75 mm-hmm. out of 100, I say 7.5 out of 10. Yeah, well, that's that's what they do for, for whiskey yeah. competitions. They Would you like me to start 100? scoring it out of 100 so I don't do that's that? That's not so a bad much. idea. Maybe we should do yeah. 100. Craig says no. Because then you can do But you 61. like even numbers. So for you, it's always a 6, 7, or an 8. <laughs> if you started scoring out of 100, yeah. then you've got a lot of space play, either way. Yeah. Is that something you want to start doing? Yeah, I think we should start scoring out of 100. Next episode. By okay. the way, mm-hmm. Craig, yes, congratulations. Thank you. Oh. You've now tasted 10 whiskies. Oh, really? Awesome. Bring me to double figures, Indeed. my man. Well done. Oh, thank you. I'll sip my rice with lemonade and mm. celebration. Mm. And smell your meth- metho spirits. Sound my metho has smell those spirits. So I went 7.5, you went 8. I went 8. All right. Shall we move on? We, we shall. shall. So we've covered all the regions of Scotland. Isla, Speyside. Highlands and Lowlands. Mm-hmm. They're the four main Scotch whiskey regions. Lance, you're on the home stretch. What do you got for us? So, so once again, I, I surprised Martin with a, an extra one that I didn't really tell him about. So, let's go. So, single malt Scotch, Scotch whiskey um, matured in charred cask. I've tried a 10 year. 10 year um, Talisca is very, very smoky. What region is Talisca from? It says it is a Highland. Right. But all the bottles are labelled by the sea. So, so, so it's a Highland distillery but on the coast. That's right. Is so so I, I, I'm still haven't got my head around where or, or how they actually brought it down as a Highland being on the sea or by the sea. Or so by are, the shore. Are, you, are you thinking that it's on the coast facing Isla and that's why it's smoky? Is that, that's, what, that's is, what, is that what, is yeah, what you're getting That's what I'm getting at, yeah. Right. Um, although um, it also doesn't label um, a year which has me had me a little bit worried to start with I actually enjoy it I, I do like a good smoky whiskey I know you do too Martin uh, Craig on the other hand we'll see we'll find out <laughs> um, and it has a cork and this one again has got a dark red amber tinge to it we look into the but light not, not so much amber but quite red but have a smell. Can you? I can smell it already. I don't know if you can. You can smell very, very, very smoky. Peat. Yeah. Very, it's very, very peaty. peaty. Yep. Smoky method. Now I should clarify. I love a smoky whiskey. Mm-hmm. But I do not love a peaty whiskey. Okay. So when you taste right. smoke, and all you get is smoke, mm-hmm. good for me. Mm-hmm. If the smoke comes through, and what you're getting is that sort of burnt bacon sort. Okay. Peated flavour. Yep, yep. That's what I don't like. Okay. And well, a distinct difference is if you have an Ardbeg and a Lafrog. Yep. That, yeah. That's black and white to oh. me. Uh, funny you say that because um, same reason is I um, that that's the same reason why I didn't buy the uh, bring the ten year. The ten year is very very peaty, very smoky, um, bacony smell like you said. Mm. Um, this is a little bit pulls up a bit more. Um, not as peaty as the tenue. I enjoy it. It's a good winter's drink. Here's looking up your kill. Again. I don't understand why he throws his head back when he's just going... Uh, <coughs> oh, the smokiness and the peatiness. Not as strong as the other smoky one I've had. Mm. Really? Mm. And the other one you've had is the Outback. So you're saying this is less smoky than the Outback? Mm, no, the Outback blew my head off. Mm. Oh, okay, that, that's why but that it, was your number one. That was my number one. That did break the barrier. Yeah. Mm. So Martin's got a bit excited here. It's, it's a beautiful smell, though, isn't it? Any flavours coming through after that smoke? Yeah, a bit. Hard, a bit I have a bit of trouble identifying flavours, but yeah, there's a couple of lingering ones. Okay, the smokiness is lingering. Mm-hmm. Had to be back up there. All right, it, it, it is charred as well. Charred cast. That's uh, that's a different sort of smoky flavour to what I've had it's, it's not peaty and it's not just that blast of smoke you get from the outbreak that's um, like you can taste the, the burnt wood the charred mm-hmm. barrel you can taste that that's quite lovely yeah I like that well, it's taken me a couple of bottles but finally I've found one that Martin so far I like winner I've been trying to explore as many bottles as I possibly can so let's and... let's recap okay which bottles did you bring to the table which I did not enjoy? Uh, Bushmills. 
spice all of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I liked your wild turkey rare breed. Yeah, you did like that. I was actually... Barrel, barrel you, proof. You, you did like that one. But you, um, Talisker Dark Storm. Very, very charred, smoky flavour. Mm. Throw it away. Yeah, I really love that charred flavour that comes yeah, through. It's, it's not your traditional smoky flavour. No, it's it's the charred. It's like having charred grilled steak off the barbie or something. It's, it's oh, very charred or steak. It's mm. very charcoal isn't it? It's very nice. You'd think mm. being charred grilled would be very, very uh, dry, but it's not. It's not dry until after all the flavour. It is a bit dry. Yeah, it is, but not it's not the as, end. It's dry mm. at the end. The peatiness, I talked about the burnt bacon taste that I don't like. There's a smidge. Mm. When I say smidge, there's a hint of it. So mm. it's not enough to sort of overpower it. All the other flavours that are supposed to come through, I'm not getting. All I'm getting is, is the smoke, the charred barrels, the charred wood. If there's supposed to be more there, I'm not getting it. But for a Highland whiskey to be that full on with that charred smoky flavour that's a surprise mm. they, they also say that um, because it's made by the sea a lot of the, the salt that's blown off the sea under the right. barrels right. it oh, has so a lot to do with the flavour also makes sense why it has a little bit of a burn because I can imagine the salt's very dry but apparently that's that's also what brings out a lot of flavour mm, yeah I guess that sort of makes sense that, that's um, what I've been told makes a lot of sense while we're drinking was. this Talisker Dark Storm, mm. which is our last whiskey, uh, should we score? Yeah. What do you yeah, think we're scoring? Uh, um, before we score, okay. I was watching the Origin the other day with a few friends, and um, we had there, there was a controversial uh, non-try at the end. Now, it was deemed deemed a try. I went to the video ref. They looked through it. It was determined not a try for reasons I won't go into. The person I was sitting with was watching it and said, who really didn't agree with the um, the, the ruling of mm. non-try, if the video ref says no try, fair enough. They didn't agree with the non-try. They said, now, if we had a 3D TV, it would be deemed to be a try. Okay, now, okay. How does that work? <laughs> I mean, how's a 3D TV going to determine that a try, that was not a try, is going to be a try? Was this your TV? Were you watching on your TV? Yeah, my, t- my flat screen 2D TV. And this person was a guest? No, this person was a guest, yeah. Did you take offence to that? Um, <laughs> Someone's telling him. It was, it's yeah, very, hang on. That's, that's very, Someone's very, Someone's telling him. Strange. The, on your 2 TV, which yeah. I'm a guest watching... Yeah. It's a no try. Did the video ref wrong. If you actually had a 3D smart TV... Yeah, the video ref would have been right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. My bad. I invited you to my house to watch maybe, maybe what it was is maybe that guy thought that the 3D TV would have given the the video ref 3D glasses. No, this is... Because maybe he's blind. This, this, this no, that's what I'm coming across. God. True. This one's referring to the video ref. Uh, that's yeah, where yeah, I'll take yeah, it. Yeah, this is referring to the viewer. <laughs> oh, wow. The viewer would go, oh yes, that was indeed a try. I better call the NRL. I think you made a mistake here. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a 3D TV. Hey, I'm pretty sure <laughs> that those referees only use a 2D laptop or yeah. a 2D TV. I better yeah, ring them because on my 3D TV, it looked like a try. Yeah, yeah. I better give them a ring. <laughs> my my TV, TV is five grand dearer than your TV so I'm right and you're wrong yes <laughs> and, and the 50 million cang- and the 50 camera angles that the NRL do have yeah, yeah. it's Can't not be, as good as my TV must be wrong <laughs> the 3D TV yeah it's always wrong yeah. <laughs> moving away oh. that's a good topic yes <laughs> <it's> <laughs> a good topic you'd be offended right yes oh, a little bit it's like you invite you invite TV? someone over to watch one of the biggest rugby league games of the year State of Origin at your house yes well, and, and they're <laughs> they're commenting on your lack of technology I know. when they're a guest in your house. Yeah. Would would that not be offensive? It was a bit dumbfounding. <laughs> it's just like but you seriously? sort of can't be offensive because they're so stupid to think that if you had a different TV, the result would have been in, yeah. completely different <laughs> uh, in a would different have state. More in his favour. Uh, <laughs> look, I will clarify. I am a Queensland supporter. The person I was with is a Queensland supporter. Watching the try, I was like, yeah, okay, video ref, you res- generally respect the ref. 
Yeah. If the right. radio if the radio ref looks at it and says, Okay, yes, there's probably a knock on there somewhere, that's like that's fair enough. If they if they send out the video ref they say, Okay, yeah, we've looked at the footage from this angle, this angle, this angle, this angle, this angle, it's not a try. Yeah, on okay. our six TVs. On our six three <laughs> D yeah. TVs. Yeah. Three D glasses. <laughs> in gold class. In gold class. Yeah. They, they got people bringing them popcorn and beers and, and they, they got their feet yeah. up. There's yeah. Big Mal and Wally and you know, all the big you know, yeah. Alan Hanger all sitting there watching the same 3D TV yeah, yeah. with their glasses on. <laughs> yeah, with drinking, glasses on. You know, drinking beer and having popcorn. <laughs> going, oh yes, that was indeed a try because we saw it on our 3D TV. Mm. Hey, those are 2D TVs, I don't know. Ah, you won't be able to pick that up. I won't be able to pick that up. <laughs> so I guess you'd call that Idiot News 2. Mm. Talisker, Dark Talisker. Storm, yeah. Shall We Score? Lance, yeah, your I, thoughts? I have to say about an eight. For price, um, smokiness. No, don't worry about um, the price. Well, well, you sort of score it across the board. You don't just score it on mm-hmm. one. If price comes into your range of scoring, then yeah, fair enough. Yeah, well, it, it doesn't come into You go to one of the shop and stand in, mm-hmm. in front of an aisle of 100 whiskies and you go, which one's the best? You, you wouldn't just look at the, the dearest one and go, okay, that's got to be the best, would you? No. Okay, so it's got to be scored on, on the price as well. You understand? I don't understand the point okay. you're trying to make. Is the point you're trying to make that when you narrow down the field to a couple of whiskies, the more expensive one is the one you would rank higher? Is that what you're that's, saying? That's what I'm trying to say that, that you're doing. So you're saying that the higher price ones are better. No, what I said what is I'm the price saying. doesn't come into it. Yeah, I don't I'm, score yeah, the whiskey so based on its price. I was um, just confused as to why you factor the price into your scoring. Well, it's because what everyday person or everyday society would buy more. So popularity in the as people's well eye flavor. factors into your scoring also. That's right. See, yeah. that doesn't bother me. If you were to spend 100 bucks and get a bottle you didn't like, and you spent 50 bucks and you got a bottle you did like, then that would change that opinion, wouldn't it? Well, it would change your own opinion. The next time you walk in there and you looked at the bottle and you said, well, it's 100 that's 50 I like the one that's $50 over the $100. dollars right. Is that opinion changing? If you, did, if you walked in there and did it. If I did it. Yeah, if you walked in there and bought a $100 bottle, and you didn't like it. Right. And you bought a fifty dollar bottle and you right. did like it. Right. Which one are you gonna buy again? The fifty. Okay. So you're looking not only are you saving half the price as well as getting a good flavour, why is the point of buying a hundred dollar bottle and Yeah, but it goes the other way as well. If I walk into That's a right. liquor store and all there is is two bottles of whiskey, mm-hmm. there's a hundred dollar and a fifty dollar, the fifty dollar one I know is rubbish and the hundred dollar one I know is good and I enjoy it. I'm mm-hmm. gonna buy, I'm gonna buy the hundred dollar one. Okay. Or perhaps so. just go to a different liquor store because there's only two bottles of whiskey left in that one. <laughs> so, Take a little bit. Um, scoring the Talisker, Dark Storm, Lance. What do you give it? Uh, I go seven and a half. The Glen Dronach was. You scored a. Uh, a little bit nicer because it had more, more fruitiness. Uh, this is just more smokiness. It's better than Jamison's, it's better than a couple other ones I've had. We're in the seven. Not quite fruity enough. So I'll, I'll score this a seven and a half. Martin, what, what are your opinion? What, what's your scoring? The last episode we did, I scored the Green Ore Eight Year Irish Whiskey, a seven point nine, much to the disgust of my fellow podcasters. There's a little bit of a difference there. Um, you've gone Scottish whiskey to Irish whiskey. Yeah. Same scoring table though. The, those two countries are still trying to work out who freaking created whiskey first. <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 how far do you want to go back? Oh. Uh, oh. Anyway, Martin, to your scoring. Well, the way I look at it is, I gave I gave an Ard Beg an eight out of ten. Mm-hmm. I gave the Green Ore seven point nine out of ten. Yeah, I gave I gave it an eight. I don't think it's a seven point five. I think it ranks higher than that, but it wasn't no. as good as the Green Ore, which had that lovely oak finish to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I've got to find somewhere between seven point five and seven point nine. So yeah. I guess I'll go seven point seven. Well, there you go. <laughs> I, I, I kind of feel like I've um, 7.7 it's about as bad as 7.9 77 out of 100 there you go true next episode we'll change I'll go, out of 100 I will go out of 100 for the next episode yeah, the, yeah. Next, the next episode we're changing the rules people so I'm happy with a 7.5 you're happy with a 7.7 7.7 you, you, you've actually scored 2.02 of a score higher than me tonight which I'm I'm actually wrapped because I found a whiskey that you enjoy. And Craig, you would have that again? I consider it, yeah. 
Well, we'll oh, we'll them again. Well, we finished on a high note, didn't we? We did. Um, cool. So scores: we had Glen Moray, Mardo seven, Lance seven, Ogentoshin three wood, Mardo four, Lance seven, Glen Dronach. Mato 7.5, Lance 8, Halaska Dark Storm, we've got Mato 7.7, Lance 7.5. Right, well gentlemen, we've covered the four main regions of Scotch Whiskey, and then we threw in an extra one there uh, for good luck at the end, Halaska Dark Storm. Did you enjoy yourselves today? Yeah, I feel well travelled. I'm still enjoying myself, I have some Talisker. So anyone out there listening, if you'd like to get in contact with us, maybe you've got a whiskey you'd like to suggest for us to try, maybe you disagree with what we say, we'd love to hear from you. Please like us on Facebook and message us. Grog Snobs, not hard to spell. <laughs> so it's a goodbye from me, Charlie Mops. It's a goodbye from Lance. Whoa, 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 hang on, hang on. This X, we don't have to end this so soon. Seriously? I, um, yeah, seriously. You said three, and I said, well... I'll I bring one to surprise you because I think I found one that you liked, and I did. So yes. So now that Lance has had a win, I've had a win. I think I'm going to have another win. He wants to go back to back. Yeah. Whoa! Back to five again. We haven't I've lost since the pilot. <laughs> <laughs> I have also brought a bottle of Glen Levitt, 18 years. Some of them, some people call it as um, nectar of the gods. Uh, uh, sorry, who calls it the Nectar of the Gods? Well, a lot of friends of mine, a lot of older friends of mine. Um, so, grandparents? People who, yeah, people who are drink, be, have been drinking this for 30, 40 years. And you hang out with them how often? Oh, a fair bit, family members. And the subject of discussion most of the time is the Nectar of the Gods. Does Zeus agree with this? <laughs> who would like to try it? I've been told hey. it is really good. I haven't tried it before. Hey, if you're offering... Then I'm trying. I'm actually smelling the cork for once. It's very fruity. I can smell fruit already. Lots of fruit. That's what I got. Mm. Yeah, I got a cork. Oh, yeah, fruit. that's like um, it's like a like a tropical fruit juice, isn't it? Mm. It's a lot of fruity flavour. Thank you, sir. What's that? Now, Craig, what can you smell out of that? Weak methane. He doesn't give up, does he? <laughs> this guy, maybe, he does not give up. Maybe we should get him to open the bottle of methane side by side with... Well, that's whiskey. what I thought. I thought that by smelling the methane, that would... Throw him clean then, off. Yeah, then he would no longer compare methane with whiskey. Which would you prefer to drink? The Glenlivet single malt 18 year Scotch whiskey does not come with a big label on the side that says poison. <laughs> Please do not fall down the stairs. <laughs> backwards. <laughs> backwards. No, 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 it's alright. We put a bit of tape there for you. You'll be fine. But Please. If, if you had your 3D TV, you'd be able to. Just because you had a tumble, if we watch that CCC footage. <laughs> CCC? <laughs> <laughs> we watch the CCC. If you watch that um, CTV footage, it looked like a tumble down the stairs. But if you watch it through, you do, he would have landed at the end. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Craig, what can you smell out of that? End taste. Whoa. <clears throat> what, what did you taste out of that? Spicy. Okay. Spice. That's probably. Is there, does this, this one have a cinnamon in it? Hmm. Must be there then. Not unpleasant. But After you might. Interesting. Oh, very sweet, isn't it? No, and it's even, it. it's even got that sort of tang, that sort of tangy, sour sort of fruit in it, as well as oh. the sweet fruits, just to counterbalance the other ones. It's um, it's quite yummy. It's sweet to start, and then mm. sours out. Is that what you think? Well, not so much that. It's just you get the sweet fruit, and mm-hmm. you get the 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 sour fruit as well. But then you also get that the what Craig said, the spice that comes through at the end. Because when you say apple. You think sweet, but mm. if you were to say Granny Smith apple, you think sour, and I think you get a bit of both in there. It has a sweet flavour uh, of fruits. It has some dry fruits in there. I'm back to dry fruit again. It's a lot of fruit. Yeah, though. It, it, it seems it, to be a common it, element in that. Mm. It seems to be a lot of fruit in there. Like yeah, it, it's mm. fruit upon fruit. You get you get mm. the sweet fruit, you get the sour fruit, you get the dried fruit. There's I, I one after it, another. I think it's a bit of oak in there somewhere. 
So what you're tasting is the, is the taste of the wood, and and you think the the taste is oak. I'm not really. I getting... can taste a bit of oak, a bit of bit of wood. It tastes like oak, right. but most of it is fruit. It, okay, it, it so you're fruit. getting mostly fruit with a hint of oak. That's right. right. Mm-hmm. The finish is short. You have, and then it, it's there for another five uh, it's minutes. Gone. Once you have it, it, it does. I mean, two three minutes, you still get the warmth there, but. Yeah, it doesn't linger like no, most whiskies do. That's interesting. Hint. Yeah, like, I, I have a little bit of warmth left there, but there's nothing, nothing else. It's gone. Hmm. So I'll, it's a different I'll, one. I, I'm looking at the glass thinking, where's it gone? Down, you, down, down your throat. <laughs> I'll ask some more. What do you rate Glenlivet and in your own? It, it's quite good. The, the sweetness is countered by the sort of zesty sour fruits like I said before but um, I know there's just that uh, that painful sort of burn just at the end there's just a, just a little bit of that which yeah, just brings yeah. it down a little bit so it's hard to score high I'm not getting a massive burn at the end I'm not it's not a way no not a massive burn it's just, it's, it's just a hint it, it, of a burn it yeah the flavour it's got lots of flavour I think it, it's got lots of fruity flavour it, well, it's it's gone the other way instead of being smoky, charred, you know, malt, vanillas, you know, cinnamon flavors. It, it's sort of gone the other way and gone. Mm. Hey, let's try all these fruits. Yeah, I like that. It's it's sort of like a it's a big one eighty U turn on what we've had so far tonight. It is. Isn't it? I really um, like that. It, this is the first time I've tried it. Um, I'm, I'm glad you brought it in. The thing is, the green or the green oil had that lovely fruit flavor. It but it had the lovely oak flavour at the end. It had no odour. This has the fruit element. It has an odour too. It doesn't have the wood flavour. Mm-hmm. So I can't give it a 7.9, so I'll have to go 7.8. Ooh. Go. Yeah. 7. 8. So, uh, so when I asked the question, Lance Craig, will you be scoring it or will you be raking amongst others? What I do is I sort of do both mm. subconsciously and I just realised that just now. <laughs> <laughs> just now. If I could combine Glenlivet 18 year and Talisca Dark Storm together, I think I would almost find myself at a 10. So are you saying that you'd like the Glenlivet 18 year, but just that after that fruity flavour you'd like a bit of smoke come through? Yes. Is that what you're saying? Yes, you want the I'm smokiness saying. from the Talisca oh, to oh, go with the Glenlivet? Yes, that's right. what I want. Okay. Glenlivet is full of fruit, Talisca is full of smoke and char. Both of them are happy to get about seven, seven, seven and a half. Seven and a half. Yeah. Seven and a half. That's if I could make a blend and pour those two together, I tell you what, it, it would be a big seller in my books. Goodbye from me, Charlie Mops. It's a goodbye from Lance. Yeah, good evening and good night. Uh, they made me put the cork back in the bottle and uh, put it away, unfortunately. Way away. Until next time, of course. Until next time. And it's a goodbye from Mr. Craig. Alright. Ta-ta. See you later. See you next time.